What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we gotta talk about what happened on Friday Night Smackdown. And this was a pretty solid episode. A lot of stuff went down on this episode, but we gotta talk about the most notable, noticeable thing. So, Roman Reigns has returned back to work, y'all. I know it's a, it's, a, it's a rarity, but he was back on the show tonight. As promised, he started off the show so we didn't have to wait too long he started off the show with paul Heyman, solo jimmy and uh jimmy as well they were all in the ring and you know they do the normal stuff you know he lets everybody know wherever he's at acknowledge me he got the yays you got the booze you know and he, he was like you know what it's the holiday season i'm in the holiday spirit it's time to give people who deserve raises those said raises and i'm not gonna lie to you i'm not a big fan of what they've done to jimmy's character but i will say this he is entertaining in what he's doing right now and it's 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 somewhat working it still doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of things but it's entertaining as hell i cannot lie so as he's announcing that he's gonna be giving someone a raise and the acknowledgement he's saying all these things like when when i step down he's going to be the guy to step up <clears throat> to take this bloodline to the next level <clears throat> when it's my time to hang it up he's going to be the next guy up he's the guy that's dominating and you have jimmy in the back behind him acting like it's going to be him he's taking off his jacket like he's He's smiling, you know what I'm saying? He's like cheesing, like, yeah, you know, he's talking about me. And then Roman was like, yeah, me and Jimmy are going to now announce and give praise to Solo Sokoa. And you can see Jimmy's face change. He he, he changed. He, you know, he, he felt a little jealous, a little salty. And basically it was to acknowledge Solo Sokoa on what he's been doing i mean he did take out john cena after all he sent him to the gulags so you know he's gonna be the one that's getting this raise and uh, roman reigns is gonna be molding him to be the next tribal chief when he steps down roman gives him a hug embraces him jimmy looking kind of salty and then randy or music hit and that's when i knew okay business is about to pick up randy orton He's been wanting to have this face to face with Roman, and I'm here for it. So after we get from uh get uh back from commercial break, which I do think it was a poorly timed commercial break, we get back from commercial break, and uh, Roman's pretty much like, "Yo, like, what are we doing here, man? You just, you just, you, you know, he had that look of you interrupted our good moment. Like, what, what do you want? What, what do you want?" And Randy pretty much is. He's in this mode like, look, I've been waiting 18 months for this moment. 18 months of this for me to think about what you guys have done to me. You know, per storyline wise, the bloodline injured him and took him out for 18 months. So I've been thinking about this over and over and over what I was going to say when I got back here. And he made it be known his main objective is to make sure he takes everything from roman that includes the bloodline that includes everyone that's involved in the bloodline and that also includes that championship and he uh wanted to have a match with roman reigns at next year's royal rumble for that uh for the wwe championship that's really all he wants he's gonna take out everybody else but he wants to take that from him the most that's what he's been thinking about and I love Roman's response. Roman is such an asshole. Even to the legend himself and Randy Orton. He's like, damn, it's a long time for you to be thinking about that. You want to know what I was thinking about? I definitely wasn't thinking about you. I didn't I, I didn't care. I, I wasn't thinking about that. You, you think you deserve an opportunity to face me for my championship? No, you don't deserve no opportunity. You go to the back of the line. And then he starts really getting into his his bag of just really showing why he feels like he's better than everybody else, which I love. 
Roman's like, look, man, this ain't 2007 anymore. This, like, this ain't this. I don't give a, I don't give a damn about you having voices in your head. The voices in your head should be telling you, hey, Randy, you need to get out of this ring, Randy. Like, what what are you doing? You need to leave the bloodline alone, Randy. That's what the voices should be saying in your head. And I love where the promo starts to go because Roman's really in his arrogant bag he's like i'm a levels above you now at this point now i am a i am a legend you know and i was like "Uh oh he set him up for that he's like i'm a legend now randy responds like you know what you may be right about that roman you may be right when i look at you now you're, you're different the way you look back the way you present yourself what, what you've done for for the company you're right you you are a, levy, a legend, but Randy, but uh, uh, Roman, there's one thing I gotta tell you, and it'll never change. This one thing will never change about me. I will always and forever be the legend killer. Oh, I loved it, loved it. Crowd went crazy, and they were kind of just standing next to each other, and you can tell Randy was about to pounce. And he got him in the position for the RKO, but he got out in just enough time. And it was that close. And Roman back all the way to the other side of the ring. Um, Jimmy and Solo start to step up. And he was like, you know, Randy was like, you know what the voices are telling me in my head right now? Hmm, let me see. They're saying you just pretty much crapped yourself. <laughs> you, you just shit yourself. Because <laughs> Roman was looking like a scalded dog. And I, I love that, man. I, I, I love just that interaction. And even Randy Orton being a little bit more uh, comedic, uh, has some comedic timing here. I love that. That was just, he was having a little bit of fun, but also being serious. And he, he ended it off with saying, well, just wanted to let you guys know, daddy's home. Drop the mic and walk off to the back. Great way to open up the show. Love what they're setting up potentially here. At this point in the show. So the the theme of the show with the bloodline is how we're going to address this Randy Orton problem. And Jimmy had a match, uh, the main event of the show, with Randy Orton. And it's one of those things where when you go to the back, they're showing them talking. Roman's kind of pissed about this whole situation. And he was like, man, someone needs to handle this this situation right here this randy orton problem and jimmy being salty he's like well maybe it should be solo since he's the guy getting the raise and stuff like that and then roman being the manipulator he is he's like well you know whoever the person is you know if they take care of this randy orton problem they will be in good grace with me they can have whatever they want and then that's when jimmy sat up and he got he he started to feel some type of way like you know that could be me and then that's when he says, he, <laughs> it's fucking funny because Roman looked at him just with this menacing look because he doesn't like the word yeet. And Jimmy's like, my bad, no yeet. Then there's another segment they have where Paul Heyman and I believe Roman are having a long discussion. And, you know, Jimmy's kind of nervous. It's like what they're talking about, what's going on here. And Solo's just standing there, like just stoic with this mug on his face. And Jimmy's like, yo, bro, I'm being serious. Like, would you tell me if they were trying to set me up or something bad was going to happen to me? Would you would you let me know? And all Solo says is I am your brother and starts flexing his fingers and stretching out that Samoan thumb. So we don't know what that meant, but obviously they treat Jimmy like a J.A.G. So we get to the main event match between uh, uh, Randy and um, Jimmy Uso. Solid match. Well, nothing we hadn't really, you know, expected from Randy um, and uh, Jimmy. Towards the end of the match, uh, Solo's music hit. Solo music hit because you knew, obviously, there was going to be some shenanigans involved. And then L.A. Knight attacks him. L.A. Knight attacks him, you know, pretty much dispatches him. And L.A. is looking at Randy Orton like, see, I got, 
I'm I'm smart. I knew they were gonna do this. And there was a backstage segment before this part even happened where Randy and, and LA Knight had an interaction and LA's like LA Knight's like, look, you know they're gonna the, the numbers game is gonna get to you. Randy's not needing his help and he's kind of warning LA, like, don't get in my way, don't get involved. You know, that could be bad for you. And LA Knight's like, look, I ain't trying to get in your way, but just know I got a gripe with them too. And if anybody's gonna take them all out, the bloodline is gonna be me. So the fact he came out there, he essentially helped Randy Orton. And Randy's like, I didn't need your help, but whatever. And while he's distracted, um, that's when uh um Jimmy tried to get the upper hand, but he eats an RKO for his troubles. And once again, Jimmy takes an RKO <laughs> towards the at the end of SmackDown. And at everything's cool at that point, you know. Randy is still talking to LA who's walking down the ramp. You know, just having like some friendly kind of banter. And all of a sudden, LA Knight gets attacked by Roman Reigns. Then Roman Reigns is looking at Randy Orton. And Roman Reigns finally gets into the ring. Then they start fighting and whatnot. And then it becomes a number game because guess what? Jimmy gets involved. Jimmy starts helping them out. So now Roman and Jimmy is stomping out Randy Orton. Then LA Knight gets involved, so he tries to even it up. But then Solo Sokoa gets involved, so now the number game is still in the bloodline's favor. Everybody's getting stomped out. LA Knight's getting stomped out. Randy getting stomped out. And all of a sudden, you hear AJ Styles music. Crowd going crazy. But AJ Styles doesn't come through the rampway. He's already on the ring side. They're looking at the rim, waiting for AJ Styles to come out. And then he sets up Roman for the phenomenal forearm, forearm off um off the uh the top rope. He hits Roman with the phenomenal forearm. Uh, I keep mispronouncing it. Forearm off the top rope. Beautiful move. Roman selling it. It's all chaos. They throw everybody from the bloodline out the ring. And I ain't gonna lie to you. That boy AJ Styles, I don't know what workout he was been doing since he got written off tv but my man look like he's in great shape look jacked it seems like whenever the bloodline writes you off television you go away for a while and you start working out and eating better i don't fucking know they came back looking jack him uh aj styles and Randy he wouldn't look in great shape out there so they're all having a little standoff aj's back talking his trash took the shirt off like yeah let's go and then L.A. Knight walks up to the rope. AJ's behind him. And all of a sudden, AJ Styles just hits L.A. Knight from behind. And we don't even know why. Everyone's like, huh? Randy's confused. The bloodline, Roman and them, they all confused. He just attacked L.A. Knight, just clocked him. And then got out the ring and proceeds to walk right past the bloodline. Walked right past him. And then walked up the ramp. They're all looking at him like, what the fuck? Randy's like, what the fuck? LA Knight's on the ground. He finally gets back up. And he starts talking shit to, to uh, Roman and company. And then they start still going back and forth. But it, it ended off on a confusing note. This boy AJ said, fuck it. Don't know why. Apparently, some of you guys in the chat uh, for the live stream reactions, y'all were saying that they may be going the route of AJ's old uh, persona he had, old character gimmick he had in TNA, where he was a lone wolf, where he just, he didn't, he was feeling with everybody, he had no friends, no loyalty to, to nobody, so I don't know if that's the route, but it's very interesting to see how things will play out, but um, overall, I enjoyed the show, very interested to see where things would go, someone made a very good comment as well, we could possibly see a fatal four-way at next year's Royal Rumble. AJ Styles, LA Knight, Randy Orton, Roman Reigns for the WWE Championship. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Randy Orton has a gripe with the bloodline, obviously. LA Knight has a gripe with the bloodline, obviously. <clears throat> and AJ Styles definitely should have a gripe with the bloodline, obviously. So we'll see how that goes. Also, you can create some other storylines with other wrestlers. You can have that storyline where I know AJ and, and LA Knight, they're going to have some words because LA Knight's going to not, it's not going to let that slide. So they can, they can have their little issues within that match. Also, 
AJ, uh, LA Knight, and Randy Orton. They both trying to achieve one uh, achieve one goal, which is to take down the bloodline. But they may have to go through each other to do that. They can have their their one off little interaction or feud within a, a fatal four way as well. And Roman is just trying to stay alive, so that could be an interesting thing. Y'all let me know which y'all be down for a fatal four way for uh, the WWE Championship. Um, they all have viable options on why. They should be facing Roman Reigns. So we'll see if that happens. But comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this episode of SmackDown? Appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150k. And I'm still going to be the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate that. Keep it with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.